So the Delhi Declaration is undoubtedly a diplomatic triumph for India. Because when there is a summit without uh, a joint communique, it is always seen as a setback for the chairman. Here, the chairman has pulled off a diplomatic triumph. So the Delhi Declaration is undoubtedly a diplomatic triumph for India. It's a, it's, it's a good achievement because right until the G20 summit was being convened, the widespread expectation was there would be no agreement and that therefore a uh, joint communique might not be possible. We might have to end up with a chairman's summary. The reason for that in particular, the main reason was the big gulf between those who wanted a, uh, a condemnation of the Russian war in Ukraine and those like Russia and China who wanted no mention whatsoever of that subject. India was able to find a formula to bridge that gap, and that is a significant diplomatic achievement because when there is a summit without uh, uh, a joint communique, it is always seen as a setback for the chairman. Here, the chairman has pulled off a diplomatic trial. That is the positive thing. But the overall presidency has, uh, has been uh, different from previous presidencies, and there are both good and bad elements in it. With the G20 summit itself, we saw two very disappointing developments. One was the complete exclusion uh, of the public interest from the summit. You found, for example, the shutdown of Delhi for three days uh, with great difficulties caused to daily wage workers and others who had no income for those days. Uh, the attempt to hide poverty uh, rather than to deal with the poor and assist them during this difficult time. Uh, this was really disappointing. The second negative in terms of the summit itself was the complete failure to accommodate uh, the opposition. The same spirit of accommodation and conciliation that we saw in achieving the declaration was not extended in the domestic concept, in the domestic context to Indians. <laughs> the leader of the opposition was not invited. <laughs> the um, opposition members of parliament uh, were not invited, not even the members of the relevant parliamentary committees dealing with foreign affairs. Nobody was invited to any of the events, the receptions, or the dinner. And the result is that a democracy, a country that called itself the mother of democracy, was showcasing an event from which the democratic opposition was excluded. I thought that was very unfair.